Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the Runcam Split Mini 2 HD FEB camera. In this video I'm going to go over its specifications, measure its latency and also test its battery consumption rate and in the next video I'm going to head outdoors and compare it side by side with the GoPro Session 5, the first version and also with the Cadex Turtle V1 which is flashed with the V2 firmware. Inside the box we can find first of all the camera itself as you can see now it features a single board, which is the biggest difference between the V2 and the V1. Next we can find a micro to mini camera adapter, spacers and screws, these wires, and also this protector which is going to secure the camera connector in place and is also going to prevent the micro SD card from accidentally ejecting. On the bottom side of the board we can find a micro SD card slot that supports up to 64 GB micro SD cards. Next we can find these two buttons that are going to help you to start and stop the recording and also to configure the camera and I'm going to get to it later in this video. Here we can find the camera connector and now they put this diagram on the cable so it's going to help you to see how to connect it because this cable can be attached either way and this is the right way to connect it. On the other side you can see that it's covered with the sticker which you will need to remove before using this camera. So first of all you can connect all the wires using these solder pads. The top one is the VCC plus and the walking voltage is between 5 to 20 volts. So it's a little bit wider than the walking voltage of the Runcam Split Mini 1, which is 5 to 17 volts. So over here we've got the VCC, then the ground, and next to the connector we can find the video out. In addition, you can also use this three pin port and in the accessory bag you can find the appropriate connectors. On the bottom we can find the RX and TX pads, so this one is the RX and this one is the TX. When connected to a free UART port it will enable you to control the camera features. The TX has to be connected to the RX and the RX has to be connected to the TX UART port on your flight controller and then you will have to head over to Betaflight and configure under peripherals to use Runcam device. Finally next to the TX and RX ports we can find a microphone. Now by the way, on the sticker itself, it says that the current input has to be greater than 1 amperes, so it warns you that you should not power it by the VTX and you should power it up directly from the battery. The weight of the Split Mini 2 is 12.6 grams, so it's almost 3 grams lighter than the Split Mini 1 and about 1 gram lighter than the Cadex Turtle. The body itself of the Split Mini 2 features 20x20 20 20 mounting holes and it is a little bit bigger than the boards of the Split Mini 1. The other dimensions of the board are about 29.4 by 29 by 4.5 millimeters as opposed to the split mini one where the other dimensions are about 29.3 by 27 by 8.8 .8 millimeters so as you can see of course by using only a single board the profile of the split mini 2 is slimmer than the profile of the split mini one. Now I've got the camera connected directly to an FV screen so let's turn it on. After about a second we can see the Runcam logo and after that the video feed is going to appear and by default it's going to start auto recording the video to the micro SD card of course if it's present and we can see the recording indication over here. In order to stop the recording you have a few options. First of all you can press this button over here and then the recording is going to be stopped. Another option you have is to use the TX and RX ports and then control it using one of the auxiliary switches on your radio transmitter and you can also just turn the camera off but you have to take into consideration that you're going to lose about a second from the end of the video. Entering the camera settings is done by long pressing the button over here. Then we can navigate for the options by using the start slash stop button. So First pressing it is going to get you to the video settings and the second button double X as the enter button by short pressing it and also the return button by long pressing it. So let's enter the video settings. Here we can set the resolution. By default it's set to 1080p 60 frames per second. You can set it to 1080p 50 frames per second, 1080p 30 frames per second and 720p 60 frames per second. The next option is loop recording. By default it's set to off. Next we can find the auto recording which means that the camera is going to start recording after you power it up. By default it's set to on and I think it is also the most convenient option. Next we can find the wide dynamic range which is by default set to on and you can also set it to off. Going back to the previous menu is done by long pressing this button. Next we can set the image. So you can set the saturation 
contrast, brightness, sharpness, and you can also flip the image. So if you would like to position the camera in this manner, it is possible. So this is pretty convenient. In this menu, you can also change the metering between average, spot, and center. And finally, the field of view can be set to wide, medium, or narrow. So for example, you can see, let's focus on my soldering iron. Now it's about in the middle when it's narrow. This is how it looks when it's wide. And it looks like that when it's set to medium. Next, we can find the TV out options. So over here, we can set the aspect ratio between four by three and 16 by nine. And the TV mode can be set to NTSC, which is the default option. And you can also switch to PAL. Next, we've got the micro SD card menu. Here we can format the SD card and we can also enter the SD card information. So I'm going to insert a micro SD card inside the micro SD card slot. And now we can enter this menu, otherwise it's going to show just a blank screen. So we can see the name of the micro SD card, the size and the amount of free space. Pressing any of the buttons is going to take you back to the previous screen. Finally, under general, we can set the power frequency between 50 and 60 Hertz. Next, we can set the auto power up, which means when the camera is going to be connected to a power source, it's going to automatically power up. You can also set it to off and then you will have to long press this button in order to power it up. Next, we can set the auto shutdown, which is by default set to off. You can reset the factory settings. So we need to press this button, then it's going to prompt you. And this is yes. And now the camera was reset to the default settings. And finally, we can also set the language. So you can set it to English, which is the default option, French, Deutsch, Chinese, and back to English. Exiting the settings menu is done by long pressing this button, and then all your changes are going to automatically be saved. In terms of latency, I tested the Split Mini 2 camera, both on PAL and NTSC, and while the camera was recording and not recording, and the result is pretty similar. And even though this test is not very accurate, it can still give us an indication about the latency of the camera. So what I've done, I connected the camera directly to an FAB screen and then turned off the light. And you can see in the video that the room is dark, but still we can see video on the FAB screen because of the latency. Now we can count the number of frames that it took for the FAB screen to go completely dark. So we have four options. NTSC when the camera wasn't recording, NTSC when the camera was recording, PAL when the camera was not recording, and PAL when the camera was recording. So the first one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So a total of eight frames at four milliseconds per frame gives us an estimation of 30 milliseconds. So I estimate that the real latency is anywhere between 30 to 40 milliseconds. Now I'm going to test the power consumption of the Split Mini 2, the Mini 1, and the Cardex Turtle V1. In order to do so, I'm going to record videos for five minutes on each camera, and I'm going to power these cameras using a 450 mAh 3S type of battery. These batteries are now fully charged, so after running the test for five minutes on each of the cameras, I'm going to fully charge them again and check what was the total mAh that was charged to each battery. So now all the cameras are recording and we can start the test. Now before charging the batteries, I'm going to test the voltage of the batteries. So the one that was used with the Turtle V1 is at 12.5 volts. The one that was used with the Runcom Split Mini 1 is at 12.5 volts as well. And the one that was used on the Split Mini 2 is also at 12.5 volts. So at the first glance, I can tell you that the power consumption is going to be very similar. And after this small test, now let's fully charge the batteries. So first of all, the battery that was used with the Turtle V1 was charged with 21 mAh. As for the Split Mini, the battery that was used with the Split Mini 2 was charged with 16 mAh, and the one that was used with the Split Mini 1 was charged with 20 mAh. So the results are pretty close, and also this is not a very accurate test, but it seems like the Split Mini 2 consumes less energy than the other two cameras. In terms of pricing, the Runcam Split Mini 2 goes currently for $70. The Split Mini 1 goes for $80, but I assume that soon it's going to go out of production. And the Cardex Total V1 goes for $55. And the V2, which I am about to review soon, goes for $60.
The main difference between the V2 and the V1 of the Cadex Turtle is that the V2 features an onboard microphone as opposed to this version which doesn't have any microphone and also the V2 has standard 20x20 20 20 mountain holes and this one features this fourth hole which is awkwardly placed over here. In the next video I took these four cameras outdoors and compared them side by side at 1080p 60 frames per second in different lighting conditions, so hopefully this video will help you to decide which camera you would like to get. As always I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about any of these cameras feel free to ask it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.